problem on your own? Because um, I know a lot of you were attempting it yesterday. But for those who haven't finished it or you know whatever it be, I will give you a chance to finish solving it. I just want to make sure you have the equations correct. OK, the first equation should be 1x. Oh, do you want me to wait a minute? The, uh, the little, I think it's red, I can't see what color it is from here. The little manual one. The big pencil sharpener doesn't seem to work anymore. Nope, not at all. You guys can pick whichever letters you want. The equations will work out no matter what letters you picked. V and B. Yes, but that seems crazy to me because they're written with vans first and buses second. You just felt like changing it up? Yeah, all right. Uh, no, the letter you chose doesn't matter one bit. Okay, I'll, I'll read it with probably what most everybody chose. Okay, the first equation should be 1x plus 6y equals 372. The second equation would be 4x plus 12y equals 780. And then x represents the number of students in a van, y represents the number of students in a bus. Bless you. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the same way we set up the first problem. So I wanted to try to match that, but whatever letter you chose is, is okay. How many of you finished that, that second problem on your own? Oh, just a couple? Do you want me to give you guys a couple minutes to finish that one? To try it? Go for it. Um, try working on it on your own. I'll put it up on the board as well. We have quite a few days to do the word problems, so I'm not in a hurry. Um, I am happy to go through a lot of these with you. Uh, next week is record time. So this week is regular. Right. Today is regular. Right. As far as I know, but I'm not positive. Okay, because they haven't had announcements yet, so it's oh okay. maybe I should read the but they're but they're inconsistent about their announcements too sometimes. Well you're better than me because I didn't pay attention to if there was no oh. um but it's supposed to be a regular day, right? As far as I know, but I I know it'll say in the uh, yeah, Friday right. email.
Don't you make that? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I wasn't sure if I was doing <clears throat> like the multiplication and the subtraction right in my head. But it worked out, so I assumed I probably did it right. Now, if you got <clears throat> if you got 18 and 59, great job. What you're going to find, if you had both answers wrong, that generally means you got the first, you made an error in the first step. If you only had one answer incorrect, that usually means your error was in the second step. So, like when I'm correcting your guys' tests, I kind of know where you make the error just by looking at your answers. Um, I initially thought I might have done this wrong because X represents how many students are in a van. This seems to be a little bit large for a van to me, but I bet we just made up the problem with random numbers without thinking of what it stood for. Otherwise, that's a big van. Okay, um, should we go on to the next one or are some of you still trying to finish yours up? Do you want to copy what's up here if you didn't get it correct? You guys are full of opinions again. Okay, I will wait. I had some feedback, nice job, Alan. Even if it wasn't verbal. I believe the way the most of the word problem packet is set up is they are trying to be grouped together. Could you um, show us how to do the regular Because I have the decimals. Are you talking about Brenda? No, no uh, pizza one. It's trying to stick in Oh, you're just working ahead is what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, we're getting there. Okay. Um, my guess is we won't even get there today, but we'll see. Like, we're, we're generally going to be doing three to four problems a day. No. Monday. Mm, sometime next week. No. No, definitely not. Um, so I'm still correcting my kelp tests, which were taken, which were taken a couple days before your elimination test. So my goal is to finish up the kelp test today, if I can then to correct all the retakes and corrections that were done on um, Thursday and Tuesday. Then to correct your elimination test. Um, <clears throat> because I don't want all of that stuff to kind of back up. I know a lot of you guys, you, you end up doing the corrections and the retakes because um, your parents probably saw the grades and things like that. So I'd rather get those grades in first. The elimination one won't take long to correct once I start it. My guess is I won't start that until next week, like Monday or something. So that's why I'm not in a huge hurry to. At some point, yeah. I don't know, are you ready to take it whenever? Okay. You probably have time today if you want. So after we're done with the problems, are we starting a new packet? No. We won't be starting a new packet until we come back. So, word problems are going to go into next week a little bit, um, and then I have some stuff for us to do for the last couple of days. Okay, let's do uh, let's do Brenda's problem here. How many of you already tried this problem on your own? Because this is the one I sort of told you to yesterday without realizing it was on the wrong. Okay, so some of you should be good at this. Um, so Brenda's school is selling tickets to the spring musical. On the first day of ticket sales, the school sold three senior citizen tickets and nine child tickets for a total of $75. School took in $67 on the second day by selling eight senior citizen tickets and five child tickets. <clears throat> I do find it weird that they don't have any adult tickets there. It is just children and senior citizens at the time. Uh, what is the price of each ticket? Um, for senior citizen and then child, define your variables, show off your work, including the equations. So first thing I think we should do is figure out what the X and the Y should be. And usually that will come from the question at the end. It says, what is the price of each ticket? 
So the price of the senior citizen ticket, to me, is going to be what we'll call X. And then the price of the children's ticket will be Y. Because those are the questions I'm trying to answer. That's normally what I'm going to make the variables, because that's the answer I get at the end. And then as you're looking through the problem, you, you try to find like the group of inf the information that's like grouped together. And frequently that will be in sentences. So like the first day of ticket sales with one sentence, it says three senior citizen tickets and nine children tickets for $75. So that's definitely one piece of information. So my first equation is going to be from the first day. And I'm going to say three senior citizen tickets times how much the ticket is plus nine children's tickets times how much the ticket is is going to be $75 because we're told that they collect at $75. <clears throat> and then on the second day, that was basically the next sentence. Eight senior citizen, five children. I keep forgetting over here. I have, I have heard that this is much easier for people sitting right over here to look at. Uh, the second day of sales, uh, it says they took in $67 and eight senior citizen tickets times how much that ticket is plus five children's tickets times how much that is. Um, yes, we probably will. So it doesn't matter whether we pick X or Y, we're definitely going to have to multiply both of them to, to make them the same. Uh, unless you decided to go with um, substitution, on this one, I wouldn't because it doesn't look like any of them will divide nicely, really. So I would go to elimination. Do you guys want to take a couple minutes to see if you can solve that one on your own? Yeah. Try that. Okay, in terms of notes, what I'm hoping to do is kind of move on to the one that's the Palanzio's pizza. So I feel like you guys are pretty good at solving, or should be pretty good at solving, and so I want to let you solve by yourself. Like, writing the equations is definitely the harder part. Um, I want to move on to Palanzio's so you can see a different type of question. This is so weird. My mom. <clears throat> okay, and if you're not done solving, that's fine, you can go back and finish that. Uh, a large pizza at Palanzio's Pizzeria costs 680 plus 90 cents for each topping. The cost of a large cheese pizza at Guido's is 730 plus 65 cents for each topping. Um, how many toppings need to be added for, to a large cheese from Palanzio's and Guido's for the pizzas to cost the same, not including taxes? Now, the, the main thing that's different about this one, there's still two situations, right? You've got Palanzio's, and you've got um, Guido's. 
There's still two situations. And I can still write them as two totally separate equations. I know the, the way the question is phrased makes it feel very different. So the actual question that's being added is, how many toppings need to be added to make them the same price? So on this one, I'm not going to choose x and y because I feel like it might be, I don't know, not more difficult. I'm going to write the equations um, with toppings, so t, and then the cost of the pizza. So the first one we'll do Palanzio's. Palanzio's is six dollars and eighty cents for the base pizza, and then they just charge you for how many toppings you do. So you've got six dollars and eighty cents plus ninety cents for each topping. And then however many toppings you choose would be the total cost of the pizza. <laughs> like that's what you would actually pay. So I'm, I'm going to pick T and C on this one. And then, uh, was it Guido? Guido's? Guido's is $7.30, so a more expensive base pizza, plus 65 cents for each topping, which so the toppings are cheaper. And that's the cost of the pizza. So the information that we're given, the equation looks different. Um, who should I go with? Jack? Yeah. I had mind blank there. Jack. <clears throat> Would I use elimination or substitution for this one? Quit telling them the answer. Why substitution? Oh, okay, we're well, not telling them the answer. Oh, yeah, go for it. Perfect. It's solved for C. So if, if one of the equations is solved for a letter, you would do substitution. So what you're going to do is you're going to take all of the information, okay, take all of the information from one equation and put it in place of C in the other. And then that will make the two pieces equal to each other. And when you're done, it'll tell you how many toppings would make them the same price. So the way the, way the information was given to us made substitution a better choice. Um, I want to start the setup for this next one with you as well. And, and I'm gonna give you guys kind of time to work, so that's why I'm not gonna. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess it's your next page. This is set up very different. Um, we're given information again, but it's just set up different. So the length of a rectangle is equal to triple the width. <coughs> Which system of equations can be used to find the dimensions of the rectangle if the perimeter is 86? I don't know if it'll help to draw it or not, but I figured I'll draw it for you guys. We've got length and width. Doesn't matter which one you call length and width. <clears throat> From this picture, though, we're given some information. And the information is grouped together again. So that's how we make equations. Do you remember when we did uh, equations a while ago? Who should I go with? Uh, let's go with Andy. When we did equations a while ago, do you remember what the is meant in the sentence? <clears throat> Perfect. Whenever you see the word is, it generally translates to an equal symbol. This one says length is triple the width. That is directly telling you one sentence. Length is triple the width. The second sentence is harder because it doesn't directly tell you information. Who 
perimeter is 86 centimeters. Well, the word is is equals. <clears throat> you guys remember how to find perimeter? I think you've done perimeter before, correct? Yeah? Okay, I know you're going to do it a lot next year in geometry, but. Can you divide it by how many sides there are in the shape? Kind of. That's a square, though. So on a, on a rectangle, you're going to add up all four sides. So you would say 2w plus 2l, because you have two lengths and two widths, and all of them added up is 86. So I wasn't sure if you guys would remember perimeter or not, so I wanted to make sure to do this problem with you. <clears throat> and then these are the two equations you would use. Because it says L equals, I would definitely do substitution. Because it says L equals, that's what would tell me to do substitution. I would put 3W in place of L. OK, I wanted to cover a kind of, kind of variety of questions with you that all looked a little different. Because that's what most people hate about the word problems is, is they're not the same. Every one of them is different. And you've got to try to figure out what the equations would say. Um, I'm not expecting you to be done with all the pages by today. But I wanted to give you a chance to work on them. So <clears throat> get as far as you can, basically. Let's just go with that. Rather than me telling you where to get to, get as far as you can. Our goal is to be done with all the word problems before we take the test, which will be next week sometime, Monday or Tuesday. OK, uh, if you have stuff that you want me to put in the computer for you, I certainly can. <clears throat>